Hello and welcome to the next day in our series on Rust in 7 Days. Today we are going to be looking at the program's environment so that it can access everything around it. And we've already looked at getting the argument flags in an earlier video. So this video we're going to start with environment variables. In order to work with that we're going to need to use standard env and we'll use two methods, one called var and one called set var. In order to read an environment variable, the method is var, so we can simply say let e equal var hello, and this will return a result. In some operating systems, the strings are not strings are not used the same as they are in Linux and Windows, which is Unicode by default now, I think. So when it actually receives the environment variables, it takes them as a as an OS string, and this method actually converts them for us and so it returns an error if the variable isn't set, or it cannot be converted to Unicode. Um, now we're working in a test here. You have to choose how you're going to handle that, but inside a test it's quite okay to use unwrap for something you know. Even if you know it's going to fail, it's, it's for your test, and so the test will fail. Use super star. Assert equal e. And since we've called unwrap, e will be a string, so let's let's assert the borrowed version of that to world. And now if we run cargo test, this test should fail because it panicked at the unwrap because the value wasn't set. So if we say hello equals world and then call cargo test, our test now passes. We've read the environment variable and it is set to the correct value. And if we set it to the wrong value, then it won't work. Good start. One of the big problems with environment in general is it can be very hard to test your code against lots of different cases. And environment flags, environment and argument flags are among the worst for this. So we're going to write some code and show ways we can test with different environment variables. Now for this we're going to use the function len to represent complicated logic. It could do anything, but where you see len, think this could be anything complicated or difficult. We'll have a public function and it will be road. And this is going to return a u size because length function always returns a u size. We'll say let e equal ver road dot and here we use unwrap or, so either we'll take the variable that we're given or we will do use some other variable. Because the type has to match. And then we will return e.len. So, so one strategy we can use is to preset the variable. So if we use set there and we set road to root. 66 and then we can let e equal road len and we will compare e to 7 needs an equals there and that test has passed it's worth noting that the tests are run simultaneously and so you do need to be very careful about how you use environment variables in that way and so I'm going to offer another strategy in testing this, and that is by separating out that part of the function. So we'll have rail len, and this will also return a u size. But here we're going to call another function, rail len with an underscore, and it's that's just a convention I've noticed in the Rust library. Um, this is kind of like it's the same function, but it's the hidden version. And this will also return a use size. But this one will take a pointer to string, and it will return s.len. And then this can call let s equal bear gwr to, and we'll unwrap or on this one. And then we can return rail len on s. In this case, to test our complicated logic part, we can simply call rail len 
in our test as long as we're inside the same module and so we'll call let r equal rail len and we can say what the result of that environment variable will be point that's track compare that with whatever its length is 1 2 15 